Okay. Hello, friends. It is said that positions do not matter. What matters is the person that chairs that position. The person brings the attitude, the vision to drive that position, to make that position successful, and also lays the path how to achieve that vision. It's a great privilege and a pleasure to invite a stalwart who has been a visionary, walked the path, and made every position so successful and raised the bar so high that her successors are finding it difficult to match that bar. Today, we have with us Dr. Anna Gellert, a person who speaks seven languages so fluently, has lived, studied, and worked in half a dozen plus countries of the world. And today, I talk to her as the Director International Office of the very prestigious Heinrich Heine Universität Düsseldorf, Germany. Welcome, Anna. Welcome. <laughs> it's such a great pleasure to connect to you on this and uh, thank you for accepting this invitation. It'll be great benefit to the viewers to understand your journey as we ravel the different uh, the different hats that you have worn and still wearing. You studied as a student for Chinese language and culture and German history. Uh, what prompted you to do that? Um, so you mean why I did that? that um, yes. I would, uh, well, um, so uh, just to um, maybe lower the bar that you have put up so high, looking from now, Backwards, it, I think in every life uh, you can find lots of achievements. Um, and now you're asking why I started with Chinese language and, and German uh, history. It's very simple. Um, I had parents that didn't want me to uh, study a certain subject, so I was free to choose. My father was very curious about language, so from, I got from him the, the, the curiosity. And um, he studied uh, Russian when he was, he started when he was 50 because he wanted to understand Russian language. And I, when I was 13, I, I, I run, ran over those Chinese characters and I was so curious. I, I just wanted to know how does that work? So that's, that's all. And, um, I was able to follow this curiosity and I studied Chinese language and I had to take another subject. Uh, in the beginning, I thought about why not uh, choose another um, interesting language like Arabic, <laughs> but uh, a wise guy told me, oh, better to have only one language and choose something else. In history, I find history is very interesting. And of course, you know that subject from school, so I said, okay, let's take history, but it was no special uh, purpose. So I just had to do that. It's interesting uh, you say this because language is the door, the path through which we understand the culture, through which we go deep so many layers that as a normal tourist cannot. Most of us are tourists when we go to different countries of the world because we expect them to speak our language, but you understood their mind and what a better way to be successful <laughs> when you understand uh, the other's mind and that brings success. And you also went ahead to do your, uh, you lived in China and then you also went ahead to do your PhD in European language policy. Um, it's all my, my it's it's I, I I was always able to follow my curiosity. That's that's all. Um, I, I'm somehow also interested. Um, so what made me study all those languages? I'm 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 not at all perfect in all those languages. At school, I had to study, of course, English and French and Latin, 
And then afterwards I, I studied Chinese and then I um, was married to a Czech person. That's why I studied some Czech. And afterwards I found a position in Japan and that's why I studied Japanese. Um, it's, it's always like, um, uh, it is not, mm, I, I didn't have, my, my goal or what I want to achieve is to, to broaden my horizon. Um, I was always aware that um, the world is so huge and there are so many possibilities and I, I just want to, um, I, I, I want to try out lots of things. It's not um, um, to achieve anything. I, I didn't, I was astonished uh, to, after I finished my master's, it, it, I had a very good mark. It was one, uh, it was a very good, that was the first uh, very good mark in my study. And then I said, okay, somehow this seems to be something that I'm successful in. So I'll try to get the PhD. And I always had the, the, the possibility to do so because I, I had a job and I, I could afford, I could, um, yeah, afford my living by uh, working and uh, doing the PhD at the same time. So it, it is, as I, as I told you, looking back, it always looks like a success or like something um, that I had a, a game or a goal, but in fact, no, I, I just decided for the moment. And when I get to know other people from other cultures or when I get in touch with other languages, I am just curious because I think my own culture is not the whole world. Germany is a very small country and the rest of the world is, is so different. And, and it's, I think it's, it's interesting. It, it's not frightening for me. I'm curious. So, um, and it, it is, is so, I feel I'm so thankful that I was able to experience other cultures, people, I met people from other cultures and, and I could, um, I, I could, um, I, 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 I realized more aspects uh, from myself, my, my own person. And this is something I feel very rich by having that. Yes, it is said that a finite mind always has set goals, but an infinite mind always tries to broaden one's horizon and become better of oneself than what he or she was yesterday. That's exactly what you did and you are doing. And you went ahead to become the uh, deputy director for a very prestigious organization um, that we both share a common thread, which was the DAAD. DAD is very prestigious because it's from the German government, has presence in 60 countries plus in the world and one of the largest funding organizations. So, and you were in Japan. Yes. And, and to be honest, um, I applied for this position three times and the third time was only successful. So I, I'm, I also experienced lots of failure in my life. Um, but uh, I'm very happy that uh, I, I, um, I, I um, uh, I can deal with that. So I know if something doesn't work out, so it's not the right time for it. Maybe later it will work. And that's all. That's also what I found in my life. When um, b before going to Japan, I or I wanted. To, uh, I was looking for a, seeking for a job in in Germany, and I, quite so several times I was one of the two last people that that. Um, they, that a company um, was deciding which one to take and they choose the other person. And of course I was all very sad because I said, why did they do that? One, um, for example, a publishing company was next to my home where I was living. And I'm, it's, it's also very constant in, constantly in my life. I, I, I live very close to school. I live very close to the university. I live very close to the place I work, I'm working at. Um, and this was a perfect match in that moment. And I thought, yes, this is it. Um, but 
well, uh, I didn't get this job. And looking back, I'm so so glad that I didn't get this job because working in this sort of environment is quite different from what I found afterwards. The, uh, there was a, um, a, a advertisement in the newspaper, and they were looking. The RAD was looking for lecturers, foreign lecturers, in Japan. And I said, okay, I don't know Japan. Um, before I had contact to Japanese to Japan because um, in Germany I was studying Chinese language, and in the same building there was the faculty for Japanese culture and Japanese language. And I found those people somehow strange. They look to be very like they are something better, or uh, I could I had no good contact to them. And and I knew about Japanese language that they have three kind of writing, and they the women are using a different language like men do. And I thought this is totally crazy. I'll never study Japanese. But then. I found this advertisement in the newspaper and I said, well, why not try? Somehow at the end, uh, my curiosity uh, was there again. And um, then again, uh, the university, it was a, a free um, lands lecturer, not, not the AD lecturer. And at first, again, um, uh, uh, they told, uh, I, uh, I didn't achieve, I, I didn't get the position. Okay, then they, they asked me, would you like to go to China? And because I had been in China before, I said, well, somehow, mm, yeah, okay, then I'll, maybe I'll go to China. But then the Japanese university called again and um, on a very uh, short notice, would you like to come to Japan and take this position? And I said, okay, I'll do it. And in fact, I didn't really know what was waiting for me. I thought I will be there for two years. Probably I will not laugh a lot because my image of Japanese people is they're not laughing a lot and probably I will not find friends. But anyway, two years and it's a good experience and I'm curious. And I went there and I finally stayed there for 14 years and it was the best best time in my life it was so great the work was just um, amazing the people were nice and i was paid to get to know this this culture and um, and on the exchange with the students and from the students i i learned so much about japanese culture i was in kumamoto which is a more or less a smaller town only seven hundred thousand people um, and it, it was just great uh, to get to know the culture was great and it's so totally different from the European culture it's so good to be away from the own culture for such a long time I, for me because um, I realized that that there is uh, that there are so many normals and mid, mm, mm, there is no one normal that is better than the other uh, Japanese culture has totally different ideas and works different, but it's not worse or better than the European or German culture. It's just different. Mm -hmm. And to get to know all that, I'm so grateful for, for that. And um, being in Japan for such a long time, I always wanted to return to Germany. And I knew that um, being in Japan for nine years, maybe it's difficult to find a job in Germany. but because DRAD is a very respected company and, and, and it's also very interesting what they're doing. And I was cooperating as a freelancer with DRAD all those time in, in Japan. And that's why I, I applied for this job. Two times I wasn't uh, successful. And the third time I thought, mm, well, I, I'll, I'll not apply again. But a friend of mine, she said, well, do it because now you're the best, you're very good for this position because you know Japanese, and we will. We are heading for a, a German Japanese year with lots of um, um, events, and that have to be organized. And in fact, um, this was also the best time to take this job. Before it wasn't so interesting, but exactly the time when I came there, we had so many uh, events, and that's also when we met. And. Uh, yes. 
that was just great. Um, yeah, I had a very good supporter. My boss was a very good supporter. And I, I learned for myself, I, I studied, I learned so many things. I'm so grateful for that. When one opens one's mind like a parachute, opens the heart, yes, there are inhibitions, but one, it, the curiosity fueled with a determination that yes, I want to know more and I want to explore and the world is one global village. This is what um, life brings, uh, just the way it has to you. And um, Japan being a very important country in the world, um, also because of its language and culture, but also because of the business, the business ethics and the economy that it is uh, bringing to the world. And from there, uh, you came to a very unique position um, wherein you were an intercultural trainer. So a German, uh, being a native German, but being an intercultural trainer uh, for Asia, for a bunch of German universities. How interesting is that? Yeah, uh, <laughs> because I am. Uh, I, I like to um, share my knowledge with other people. I want to. I was um, for fourteen years. I was talking to Japanese people interested in Germany or in, in German, I tried to explain German culture to Japanese people. And uh, when my friends came to visit, I tried to uh, explain Japanese culture to German people. And that's, uh, I think it makes lots of fun. And um, yeah, so I, uh, and I think I can be helpful because there are always the same problems occur when uh, German and Japanese people talk or deal with each other or they have to manage something. And I, I feel a very good satisfaction, a very deep satisfaction when I can help uh, that maybe this project um, is will be successful because people know how to deal with each other. And from there came the big leap. So from uh, it's said from the from where the land ends and from where the sky begins. Uh, you were appointed as the director international office for this very prestigious, uh, prestigious public university, the Heinrich Heine University Düsseldorf in Germany. And this is 11 years back. Yeah, 11 years back, yeah. Yes. Uh, so also, um, I have to admit that I uh, applied for a lot of jobs uh, when I, uh, already when I was in Japan, because I wanted to uh, come back to Germany and find a job. I don't know, maybe seven, eight, nine times, nine interviews probably I, I had. And um, also, this is uh, frustrating, somehow frustrating. You apply, when, when I was applying for a job, it took me about one week to write the, um, the application. And then I had to fly over and I have this, uh, the, the, the interview. Of course, uh, uh, preparing the interview also took lots of time and I, I spent um, yeah, lots of time preparing this interview. And, um, then to have to, to do not be successful it's yeah it's um it's not easy but just go on and somehow the when when i had this interview in Düsseldorf, somehow suddenly it was um yeah there was some kind of fit it, it fits what they were looking for what i um what I told them what I, about my plans, what I would, about my, what I think is valuable in this field. And they, they liked it. So <laughs> when you apply for a job, it doesn't, it's not your, it's not only your qualification and it's not your preparation, but it's um, the fit. Do you fit in what they are looking for? Mm -hmm. So, and in Dusseldorf somehow, because um, here are lots of Japanese people and they, the university has lots of Japanese partners, I think this is a, was an advantage for me to get this job. And then, so for 11 years, I'm now yeah, head of the international office. Dusseldorf is also the largest uh, German-Japanese partner that a direct flight from Dusseldorf flies to Kyoto, Japan. So it also has the largest uh, Japanese German chambers of commerce, right? So yeah. that also brings a lot of business, 
um, business community and guest lecturers from Japan. Yeah. And um, 11 years international office to a university which has international collaborations with not just European partners like Spain, Italy, um, France, but also Japan, America, Iran, Mongolia, China, Czech Republic, and so much more. Um, this university has, it's one of, it's one of those universities which is supporting refugees, but at the same time, students with disabilities. It is supporting education even when a person has a child, a single parent. And pursue your education even when you are great at sports. It's called this Olympic base for the uh, Nord Rhine Westphalia. So, um, on one hand, this and the other hand, very prestigious fundings from large organizations like the, U the research center, ULISH, Diabetes Center, it's called the Wissen, the Knowledge uh, Center in Düsseldorf, endowment portfolios and so much. There's just so much. Tell us something from your, from the chair that you sit on, from the high chair, uh, what, exactly does an international office do? What are your priorities? Um, yes, um, um, the internet, uh, there are lots of different kinds of international offices and people coming from abroad, especially when they come from America, they have a, a high expectations what an international office is doing or dealing. You probably all know that in Germany there are no uh, tuition so uh, the, to study at a, at a public university is free of charge. That's why um, the means of the university are um, also different. Of course the university has money, uh, the state uh, public funding, but um, the idea of having good service, uh, well, service like in the US is not, um, is not so, in Germany is different. Of course we, um, so that's why um, in the last 11 years, um, we more and more changed administration student administration into student services mm -hmm. that means that um yeah maybe you can uh, understand what i what mm -hmm. i mean so of course yeah. so, <laughs> it, it's a big jump um i remember when i was at the dad uh, way back uh, in 2001 we were expecting students to come to us we brought in the change that we go to where the student is so that's the service but you're providing the same service what a student in america would be paying 150,000 us dollars plus whereas here practically free yeah tell us more okay so um that's what we are working on to change the perspective um we don't tell people what the rules are we tell people what they have to do to get for example scholarships or to get whatever they need we we are a very small international office so we focus on uh, scholarships for study abroad and we also on the on the other for students from hhu and china university we send them abroad and we have a quite unique um, way to select the students. We only take one criteria. If you fulfill this criteria, um, then you'll get the money. It is not a full scholarship, but at least you get 300 or 400 euro per month and for the travel expenses, um, some kind of money. Um, um, my colleagues in the other, on the others in the other international offices, they are a little bit jealous because they still have these committee meetings and lots of criteria, uh, several criteria you have to fulfill to get a, a scholarship. So um, 
eighty percent of the the students that apply for a scholarship they also get it they will get it that's what what we are proud of we also offer Erasmus scholarships that's mm -hmm. what all German universities do and now Erasmus gets um, again uh, every seven years Erasmus changes a little bit has new rules new possibilities and the new Erasmus um, um, concentrates on digital, whatever, di digital um, exchange of documents or whatever is digitally possible, then a blended mobility. So you don't have to move, move all, or maybe just for a short time. So this is changing now. Europe, the U European Union really wants the universities in Europe to become one kind, one European higher education area, and we feel this pressure very, very getting more and more uh, intense. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, we uh, care for students um, that degree seeking coming from especially non EU countries and offer um, certain programs for and uh, supporting them to find a way in Germany to study German uh, and also to know and to think about what to do after they finish the, the, their degree. We found that lots of uh, degree seeking don't think about what they do afterwards mm -hmm. and um, then it takes more time to find a suitable uh, way and we support them by uh, telling them what rules there are, what rights they have and mm -hmm. how they could prepare if they want to start uh, working in Germany. But this is all um, not our own ideas, it's a policy driven. The German mm -hmm. policy wants us to under, to support and integrate refugees. That's why we have lots of money to for activities for refugees. And the German government also wants uh, foreigners to stay in Germany and to work in Germany. That's why we have money for those programs. So that's also what other German universities uh, offer. For my office, I can I can tell that we are quite successful in, in uh, applying for third, country, uh, third party money, uh, but the, what we do is very similar to what other universities are also doing. It's really impressive. You spoke about the most important things. Um, I have been invited by various universities in India to uh, to interact with their students, deliver webinars. And one of the most important question is what you have actually spoken about. And that is um, not just focus on the study. Yes, there is focus on the study, but also what after education. And that makes it wholesome, that makes it sustainable, um, and that makes it long term. And Germany is never about frivolous, but Germany is always about quality, uh, sustainability, and long term. We so, hope yes, yes. <laughs> and, and you have also mentioned about Erasmus Mundus. This is also very interesting for students, especially from um, India when they're applying. And uh, when you mention about going abroad, let me clarify that the home university would be the HHU University and then going abroad would be a partnership program with any of the partnership countries like Japan, America, um, so many partnerships that you have. And these are just not on paper, but very, very successful and active partnerships. You have spoken about uh, mobility grants and exchange students. This is very interesting for students because uh, that brings uh, that brings the versatility in education, how that same uh, field, the same subject is being taught at a different country, in a different country with a different professor. Um, and you also have uh, foreign ambassadors. Can you highlight a little bit on that as well in the field of math, natural sciences, medicine? Yeah. 
uh, we are very lucky that the professor, because you said uh, you, you just spoke about, about professors, uh, I think our professors are very um, active and yeah. that's what we read in the reports of the Erasmus students, they always comment that uh, they are very flexible, very, um, you can uh, approach them anytime and they mm -hmm. will answer whatever uh, question you have and I think that's that's important because university is about studying as as you said but and all the other things are also important but to um, it should be well as the, the biggest part maybe is uh, to to have a good professor that mm -hmm. uh, you can reach and that really supports you in your uh, study. I think that's the most important thing uh, because that brings about new age solutions. And um, I have personally visited uh, you at your university and I understand that the professors have a minimum of seven to eight years of corporate experience. Uh, so what they are bringing in is uh, live solutions to the problem. So it's not a bookish solution, theoretical solution, but practical solutions and that is what is making uh, the, that's what making the whole difference that's what bringing about an edge to what a student would otherwise study um, and approachability so I think those are some winning combinations what are the foreign ambassadors uh, the fields um, um, it, uh, the, uh, it is important uh, that you have a person, uh, like a peer-to-peer -peer person that you can talk much mm -hmm. easier to. In the international office, we are already uh, dinosaurs, quite old, and we can't, uh, um, we don't know the, uh, um, what young people have in mind when they when they think about going abroad or are not um, and to have young people that can uh, talk to the uh, students and to answer their questions is quite important so there is an ambassador in each faculty we have five faculties and they have various uh, tasks, uh, but also they they have they organize the going abroad week in November. That's when um, all um, all people that deal with foreign country or exchange uh, gather together, and the students um, can ask all questions or get lots of information and inspiration. I think inspiration is much also very important, not only information. Um, yeah, so they are younger and they uh, have a direct um, approach to the students, more direct approach. But also um, in, in Düsseldorf, the European Student Network is quite active. That is, um, these students are mainly students that have been abroad by themselves so a couple of semesters or years ago, and they engage and um, want to help foreign students to feel at home in Dusseldorf. And they are very active in Dusseldorf. At every evening there is some event. Of course, now it's Corona, a little bit different, but uh, very good. These are other uh, possibilities to have a, a peer that you can mm -hmm. talk to. We also have a speed dating, speed um, where um, people coming back, uh, outgoings uh, when they came back, talk to uh, other students that are just about to decide if they want to go uh, to, uh, to spend time abroad or not. I think that's very interesting. And every time a viewer when she's saying going abroad is the home country, home university is the Heinrich Heine University of Düsseldorf and then uh, a semester, two or three semesters abroad uh, to any of the partner universities in partner countries. So, so this is um, very interesting. Uh, Dr. Anna Gallet, would you like to say something to our viewers who would mainly be students from India and students from America? So these could be students, young researchers and young professionals. 
Yeah, it's um, the only what I um, stand for, or what I have experienced in my life, that it's always worth to to a try. It's always worth a try. If you fail, okay, then maybe it hasn't been the right thing. But it's not your own. You're not a bad. You're not a uh, not not a bad person when you when you fail. Fail is part of failure. Is part of life. And whenever I failed uh, afterwards. Um, it, it helped me to grow. So for all my failures, I'm also very grateful, and I'm I'm grateful that I can grow or yeah develop myself by uh, failures. And then uh, the right thing, my deep, um, I think that the right thing will come true anyway. So whatever you try. The right thing will, will in the end the right thing will be um, yeah will be, become reality so just um, do what you what you deeply feel that you want to do and follow this uh, deep idea of what you uh, what you when you feel satisfied or what what you what you are curious about don't talk don't think about um, Okay, when I study Chinese, probably I, afterwards I'll find no job, or um, or this is the, the, the very low-paid job. Of course, this is. I think this to probably uh, to choose a, a subject or to choose a job, just because you think you have you will earn lot, lots of money later. Uh, is not uh, a, a good thing because uh, I think you don't get happy. And the most successful, the, the, the best way to have success is to feel happy and to be um, to 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 be full of energy because what you do gives you energy and doesn't take energy away from you. So that's um, just to um, yeah to. Uh, don't uh, worry so much uh, do whatever you think uh, you, what, what you want to do and life will you you have to um, um, to struggle or to, to do something to be uh, to do something to be active but you will also lots the, the, the other half you will get its presence from heaven or I don't know from where but uh, as soon as you uh, uh, go on and, and, and do something, uh, you will get so many presents um, from other people, from um, whatever uh, magic or um, whatever. So mm -hmm. don't worry about is this right or is that. I think very worrying about um, thing things takes the most energy away and uh, and is is in most time doesn't has any success I, I think for myself so that's what what I think after um, having done all that uh, would be my idea what what I want to tell other people what a powerful message <laughs> a message that says follow your passion do not worry about the economics that will work through it. And that's very powerful because in today's mindset that I see, I, I connect to hundreds and thousands of students and there's just one mindset that says, where, where, where are more jobs or which is a high being, mm -hmm. you know, rivers, the other way around. And this is proved and said by the testimony herself follow your passion because when you find out what you're passionate about put in immerse yourself when you've immersed yourself you will embrace the thing three six in 360 degree and what will come will be the outcome will be monetary but also the happiness and satisfaction so friends what are you waiting for if you have to apply there are so many subjects that Heinrich Heiner University offers, for, and there's a big variety from quantitative biology at the bachelor's level to economics and masters or industrial pharmacy, all the way from artificial intelligence and data sciences to international master's program in physics, 
or about language, literature, and culture to biochemistry, not just at the master's level and bachelor's level, but also plant, science, plant sciences at the PhD level. And this is very important, what I'm saying about these subjects, that whatever your subject be, you can choose that to study at this very prestigious university, knowing that these subjects are in English medium, what I just spoke about. Knowing that the that the ambience which which consists of the professor, uh, the the officers at the international office are so welcoming, warm, and also they have very special foreign ambassadors. So the entire shift is not just sitting there as an international office, but a service fueled international office. Service fueled is doing everything possible in their way, capacity, and power to ensure that the students are in the forefront, whether you're a student in terms of an international student, exchange student, doesn't matter, you're a student, you wish to study, and that will be backed by so many efforts that this university is doing for you in terms of exchange, Erasmus Mundus, foreign ambassadors, um, uh, North Rhine Westphalia has a NRW Vega <laughs> Leuchtturme. <laughs> this is so very vital. Um, and advice um, on, on options after your education. Knowing the head, you know how uh, the team would be. So it has been an absolute great pleasure uh, for me, as well as the hundreds and thousands of students who will be viewing this interaction to get inspiration to apply at Heinrich Heine University Düsseldorf, but also inspiration from your life because your life has been your message. You've lived what you believed in and you are a life testimonial. So thank you very much for your very generous inputs on a variety of topics, the various hats that you've worn, the paths that you've taken and your vision forward. What is that that your heart sets out now? What do you wish to do now? <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's a very great opportunity to uh, talk to so many people and to, um, yeah, for your nice uh, words about what I, what my life. Uh, uh, so that's, yeah, thank you very much. I feel very warm and welcome as I know you as a person. And uh, again, it's nice to meet you and, and to talk to you. And thank you. Yeah. giving you this opportunity to spread the knowledge about uh, Heinrich Heine University also is very nice. Thank you. What, what do you wish to conquer now as a person? Which which um, <laughs> in, in I'm very much interested in Indian philosophy. I I, uh, I, I had a I, I'm into yoga already now for six years and in meditation. So. Um, I get to know uh, Indian philosophy, and that's very, 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 very interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> everything you've spoken is focusing. Uh, you have a philosophical approach uh, that's evident by every word that you speak uh, and say. So yes, it'd be very interesting for Indian partners also to connect uh, because the connection is um, based on. Um, the strengths of each other complementing each other so it's it's really nice um, to know that and um, anybody has any question is more than welcome to write into us at queries at the rate exponent consultants.com um, i'm sure if there are very specific questions for dr anna gellett uh, it'll be directed to her and she'd be more than happy to answer that Thank you again uh, for this wonderful interaction, for this wonderful interview. Thank you. Um, appreciate your time and inputs. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.